Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Butcher Circus. Today we are going to be watching a match between myself and Revolver Opossum, a Darkest One player that I met uh, just a couple days ago. And we are playing this uh, very interesting team that I actually designed quite recently. So it looks like somewhat of a defensive strength team, but it's built a little different. It is very defensive, but it's going to be making use of the double repast in the form of the Abomination Beast Vile and the Men at Arms Retribution. As well as having a Musketeer for support, quite like the, um, the support Musketeer that we saw a couple videos ago. As well as a Flagellant in the front line, just to ensure that we have a really good late game. And its win condition is basically going to be spamming Beast Vile and Reign of Sorrows. So that's uh, going to be hopefully what we can achieve today. So we are playing against a Leper and the Abomination in the front line. And <laughs> both of them have Hemlock and their bleed, uh, their character specific bleed trinket. So it, they're both kind of DOT characters, which uh, comes off as, uh, you know, kind of an interesting idea. It's not something that you see every day. It does kind of work, you will see that they are going to apply a lot of DOT because both of them have uh, abilities like Hue and Rake, so they will be applying actually a lot of uh, DOT considering the, um, the possibilities. So my opponent here decides to go for a transformation and goes for a Rake disregarding the repast and eats a crit for 18. That's what happens when you disregard the repast. So he's probably not going to go for that again because he just took a big hit to the face. So yeah, you can see me. Uh, highlighting that shield spike there. Really, really, really good ability. So you can see that he actually did like a decent amount of DOT to my characters, but honestly, we just did so much damage back. So why do I go for a ranging shot with the Musketeer here? Well, it's not going to heal much stress, but it's going to give me much needed accuracy and minor stress taken for my characters. Because um, while Beast Smile does have pretty nice accuracy, considering that I have the Regis Cloak and I can potentially go Command, uh, we don't really have a lot of accuracy to deal with the enemy Houndmaster, which is running the double dodge trinkets and is guarding that abomination. So we're just gonna have to hope that um, we get lucky as uh, RNG goes. So yeah, you can see we're already missing these beast piles. And it's gonna be quite difficult for us to take down that doggy if we don't actually do a lot of accuracy buffs. So this abomination now decides to go for a rage on my musketeer, does a ton of damage. This is not looking too great for us because uh, you definitely don't want your Musketeer getting hit too hard, like, she's the character that sort of uh, keeps this team together, you know, with the direct heals and the anti-stress. She's, uh, she's really like the heart of the team, I'd say. So I was thinking of maybe going for a guard, but I end up just dropping a bolster because it's going to help us in the long run in terms of uh, giving us dodge as well as minus stress taken. Of course, if the Musketeer does go under too much danger, we can just heal with her self-heal or we can even use the Flagellant's Redeem. So what's going to happen in this situation is my opponent is just guarding both the Abomination and the Leper and he's going to be spamming command with that Men at Arms which means he's going to be giving them accuracy, crit and damage bonuses. So here I decide to just move forward with the Flagellant. I know that my opponent can go for a purge. I know that he likely drops me to the back. But even even if he does that, I do a heal on the other characters since I dropped the Death Sword, and I can always heal the Flagellant with the patch up from the Musketeer. So it's really, really useful to actually have um, to actually have a healer on your team as long as the Flagellant. Because it means that every time you drop to Death Sword you aren't always forced to to just drop a Redeem or an Exsanguinate. And that could really really help you uh, you know, kind of cheese out a lot of those heals from dropping to that store, even though you can only do it once per round. So here I'm just going to keep this um, retribution up. You know, this these two repasts are what what's keeping his Houndmaster from just going Hound's Harry, and what's keeping that Abomination from just going Rake, as well as the Leper from going Hugh. So now he does a lot of damage onto my Musketeer, and I see I'm taking 6 DOT and I have 3 HP. So what's going to be my game plan here? Well, I could heal myself, I could just drop to that store and heal myself, I could just click the flash ones and go for an early redeem, but uh, I feel like I can't do that just yet, so I decide to go for a very brainy play. I move forward again with the Flagellant, expecting another Purge to come down, which um, has a 60% chance of moving us back. And why do I want this Purge to drop me to Death Star? Because if it does, I heal the Musketeer just enough so that now she doesn't drop to Death Star, and I'm able to heal the Flagellant again, and I'm able to keep spamming that Beast Pile. So... 
it's just, uh, it's like this very intricate gameplay that's going on right here. And look at that heal. Healing for 15 with a, with a patch up? That is actually insane. It's because she has the healing skills trinket, as well as the buff from the, from her bandages. Instead of curing the bleeds like the, um, like the Arbalest, her buff actually increases healing received, which is really good. So the same abomination is just going to keep spamming that beast smile. We still miss that doggy. It looks like we're going to miss him quite a bit, but we are hitting that mana arms pretty hard, and we are, uh, you know, we are stacking some DOTs on him as well as getting slowly uh, to afflictions on the, on his side of the team. So my opponent is just going to keep guarding. Now I actually have a chance of going for Inner Sorrows. Or I could just, uh, or I could just drop a command first to actually give me extra accuracy because that would make my Reign of Sorrows way more likely to, to actually just uh, land on both the enemy characters and do some very, very meaningful damage. So yeah, I'm gonna drop that command. It's gonna be quite useful for us. This abomination is already at plus 40 accuracy between the trinket and the buffs, so that's really good. Here, I don't really appreciate that my flagellum drops to 3 HP. Because that means that I either have to go for a preemptive heal with the Musketeer and drop the Death Door, or I will have to go for a heal with the Flagellant and uh, start using that Redeem. So because of all the accuracy buffs that we actually had on that Abomination, we managed to land a hit on that Doggy and start applying some DoD. So you'll notice that my opponent doesn't really have a lot of sustain. He does have the Leper Solemnity, he does have the Abomination self-heal, and he does have Lick Wounds with the Doggy, but he doesn't really have a direct healer that isn't uh, limited to like a number of uses like I have with this Musketeer. So going for a prolonged fight is really going to help us out. So here I'm thinking, like, I don't want to click the Musketeer because I'm going to drop to this sword, and I also kind of don't want to heal the Flashlight because then I'm going to be forced to heal, or I might just suffer the fate of the 20% death blow. And I definitely don't want to suffer that, because if I lose the Flashlight, right now everything can go downhill just uh, extremely quickly so i decide well you know let's just calm down let's uh, let's take it easy we are currently in a in a pretty good situation we can just drop a redeem we still have another one we're just going to go for redeem bring all the characters pretty much back to full hp and keep applying that pressure with the beast pile so he decides to go for an immediate rage he's trying to focus on my fire shot a crit there with that rage and then maybe uh a chop from the leper would have would have dealt a lot of damage, enough to bring me down to this door. Of course I do have these heals, but since my flash would be dazed, this uh, this could have been quite scary for me. Because once you do heal with your flash he is gonna be dazed, so even though he heals for a lot, he's gonna be quite vulnerable. So that doggy just keeps spamming that guard dog. It just keeps spamming that. He's up to 92 dodge. Uh, but of course I can always just um just keep going for those command buffs and uh, keep going for that ranging shot potentially if I have uh, the ability to do so and just stack Beast Pile on him. Of course, I'm probably gonna miss most of my abilities, but even though he has a lot of dodge, I can focus on the rest of his team and uh, win that way. That's kind of the that's kind of been our goal here. Just chip away at that man at arms slowly but surely in this war of attrition that we are on right now. He's managed to use one of my flagellant's heals. I've managed to do a lot of damage to the rest of his team. So you can see that because he actually has uh, Nepenthe on that uh, on that man at arms as well as Rancid Cureall, he's being quite resilient to my beast smiles because he's not eating as many points as he normally would be. And he's also taking a little less stress, with a chance of going virtuous. I don't imagine that uh, that uh, would be happening, but it is a possibility. So now that Abomination finally decides to de-transform, and goes for a stun on my Musketeer, so that's her action gone. That means that I'm not going to be able to use a heal for this round, so quite an interesting play. Not to just drop another Rage, but to just go for a stun in instead. I can't really comment on how effective it is compared to a Rage, because I feel like a Rage crit would have dealt a lot of damage, and it would have put me in a position where I'd be forced to heal with a Flagellant, but it looks like he just preferred to go for that Manacles. So he's gonna drop another Guard Dog here, you know, just just keep guarding, <laughs> just keep guarding the front line. It's such a weird, um, it's such a weird team that he has, but it is, it is pretty competent because his characters do a lot of damage if i if i slip up it is uh this is very painful for us 
So we're gonna drop the Train of Sorrows there. You might notice that I have the Crimson Hook on this Flagellant. Why do I have the Crimson Hook? Well, it's extra bleed chance, extra crit, extra stress versus uh, characters that are bleeding. You know, extra crits also mean extra stress, so it's overall just a great trinket. And um, even though there's other trinkets I'd like, like the Snuff to give us some extra move resistance, it would have been very useful here for sure. Even though I do like that trinket, even though I do like Hemlock, I feel like Crimson Hook is just working better with this team because the win condition is still stressed, even though we're not applying too much of it. I mean, we've done like a grand total of, I don't know, maybe 80 stress in 6 rounds, but uh, we do a lot of DOT as well, so... Uh, the Crimson Hook really helps us move uh, towards our win condition. So that Fagelt is just gonna sit in the back, pretty much comfortably in the back, I'd say. And um, let's give that Abomination some accuracy buffs. So right now he's at plus 50 accuracy, considering the buffs and his trinket. So Beast Viral is actually gonna be pretty much a 50 50 of hitting that doggy. And keep in mind that Beast Viral, I mean, it's kind of a loaded ability if you think about Beast Viral. It, uh, it does stress on both characters that you hit, it does a lot of blight, it does a total of um, 9 blight on each character, that's that's a decent amount. And it also activates a pass that uh, if it lands, it does another bit of damage, it does another blight, and it does more stress on top, so it's kind of a loaded ability. It's, uh, it's a pretty good win condition if you think about it, you know, just to keep spamming that beast smile. If you have a team built for it, it works really, really well. So yeah, we're just gonna keep going for it, and this time we actually hit that doggy. And you can see that 1v smile is gonna do 9 damage, it's gonna bring him down a considerable amount, a considerable amount of HP, for sure. So, they're taking uh, a lot of stress, that Men at Arms is almost uh, falling to their store, he's almost afflicted as well, so it might be round 7, but it looks like his team is finally starting to crack. He decides to go transform with that uh, Abomination, and most likely gonna go for a Rage on my Musketeers, so that Rage does come down, the Musketeer is gonna drop to 0 HP, and uh, this is quite a scary situation for me, because even though his only ability right now that can reach positions 3 and 4 is that Abomination, he also has Hounds Harry, and um, you know, it would be kind of weird for him to go Hounds Harry at this point, you know, considering that I do still have the double repost. But uh, he could always just go for it and get a quick a quick and easy 25% death blow, so I don't really want to risk it. I'm gonna click this Musketeer here. That was quite risky because he could actually just get that 25% death blow. But uh, what can you do? I feel like it would be the best play for us to just exhaust some of the DOT. And then I could potentially go for the heal. So he drops the Hound's Harry there, he doesn't get the death blow, and he gets repulsed for... Um, for 7 by the Manor Arms. The Abomination actually misses, but the Manor Arms does a decent repulse as well as a bleed. And now I'm pretty sure I'm gonna decide to just go for a redeem on that uh, Musketeer just to bring her back to a decent amount of HP because I don't want to move forward with the Flagellant right now because I'm just gonna get yeeted to the back again. And um, then what's gonna happen is since I get yeeted to the back, I won't have the healer immediately, so this isn't going to be too great. I decide to go for a retribution first. That crit is really useful because it's giving a, our entire team plus 8 accuracy since we have the insignia of rank trinket, and it's also doing some very decent stress onto that manor arms. He actually decides to go for a purge. He gets a purge crit, but also gets crit in return. I have no idea how that purge didn't actually just drop us to the back, because considering he had a crit, he had a 95% chance of pushing my men around to position 4. So I'm really happy that didn't happen, because that would be devastating, since the Abomination would go to position 1, where he can't be smile, the men arms would go to position 4, where he can't repost, and the Musketeer would be in position 2, where the only thing she can do is uh, Buckshot, and that's definitely not well, not what she wants to do, she wants to be healing. So I'm just gonna drop a heal on that Musketeer, she's gonna go pretty much back up to full HP, same as with the Flagellant. And my opponent uh, finally drops a Death with, this, with that Manor Arm, so finally the Blights have caught up with him, he's also almost afflicted. I'm probably gonna go for the immediate death blow, I'd say. I do still have a decent amount of accuracy, so we're gonna go for that beast file, hopefully get the 25% death blow. We don't, but we do still hit the doggy, so it's quite a good outcome, but we are 
we are likely to get this affliction right now, but oh my goodness, that man at arms goes courageous. He decides to go courageous, that is Nepenthe Valley right there. Unfortunately for my opponent, it's probably not gonna save him, because even though stress is our win condition, I mean, that man at arms is uh, more likely to just die from normal attacks. He decides to go for another purge, eats another repast crit, doesn't slam me to the back again. It's just outrageous, it's just totally outrageous how this match is turning out. Here I'm thinking of going for a heal, I'm thinking of going for a death blow with my aim shot. I mean, what would you do at this point? I would say that the best choice we'd have, I mean, I could also go bunk shot to potentially get uh, a hit on that man arms, and also maybe even a hit on the doggy to bring him down to zero. But um, I am considering that at this point we just need to knuckle down, you know, be playing defensively as working has been working out well for us. So just keep your characters alive. Don't don't suffer any risky 25% death blows. Just keep that man arms alive and well. Every time they go for a hit on him, they have to eat a repast. So every heal we do is extremely extremely valuable. This team just feels really oppressive to play against because. How do you prevent, uh, you know, how do you circumvent that double repost and how do you take down a flagellant that has a, a musketeer supporting him as well as having the gauntlet of absolution? It's just really, really difficult to burst your way through this team and you're not going to do it with stress because a ranging shot is pretty much going to clear 18 stress and uh, give minus stress taken buffs. So it's really, really difficult to deal with what we have here. So the final is just going to move forward. Hopefully get a Reign of Sorrows next round because a Reign of Sorrows is really, really, really going to hurt. If we if we do manage to, to land, of course, so we need to get the accuracy in on that doggy. He decides to go with wounds, which means he heals, but it also means he loses 20 dodge. So he's down to 52, which definitely isn't that much. It definitely isn't that much anymore. So now we can go for Reign of Sorrows. We do hit the doggy, we do hit the Manor Arms. So you can say that his bleed, uh, his healing isn't really helping him because it might just save him for another round, but he's he's going down nonetheless. So between the Courageous and the and the Rancid Cure Roll, you can see me highlighting that Manor Arms bleed resistance. He has 100% bleed res, that is totally insane. So yeah, our bleed chance is pretty much non-existent, but uh, we can just go for a death blow with this beast pile. And what is up with this Manor Arms? He just keeps surviving. He survived four death blows. He's going to be able to use another command if he wants. Yeah, just totally outrageous how long this man has survived. Now he's gonna go for another rage on my anti on my musketeer. You might be asking, like, wait, when I play the A-bomb and I keep him in transformation, he always takes so much stress just from acting. Well, he isn't taking stress because he's being constantly guarded by that doggy, which means he has minus stress taken since he's guarded. Uh, that's the men at arms, uh, I mean, the hound master's uh, guard buff to the character that actually gets guarded is that he, he gets, like, insane debuff resist as well as um, insane stress uh, taken buffs. So that man at arms does get to act once more, goes for a command, most likely the final command he's gonna have. I do still have two rounds of repast, but I'm thinking to myself, I might want to go retribution here, just so I get that man at arms out of the way. But then I think again, I decide to go command, and why is that? I get to go first next round, and my beast smile is actually gonna hit both backline characters, because the doggy is guarding the abomination and the men at arms is guarding the leper, so I get to hit both backline characters with a beast smile almost as if it's a Reign of Sorrows, and since I have uh, a nice accuracy buff right now, I have plus 38 accuracy, I get to go for a beast smile on that backline, and look at that, double death flow, just totally insane, two guards removed in one move, I don't think I've ever seen that before, two guards getting removed in just one move, so that's his backline, like, totally gone, finally by round 10, this beast smile just doing so much, so much over the, over this match, so that abomination is going to detransform. I'd say most likely he's going to go for a stun on my musketeer. Yeah, he's just he's been trying to take her down, but it's been so so difficult for him because he just has to move around all the stuff that I have. And he has to deal with the flagellant. He has to deal with the musketeer healing herself for like 15 at a time. It's just way too much. It's just way too much to deal with. As well as he's taking those those uh, like. 
Not very impactful, but slow but steady and surely. The beast pile just adding blight, adding stress, just keeps chipping away at his team. And now we get to move forward with the flagellant, and guess what? He doesn't have reach against position 4 anymore, since he doesn't have the Hound's Harry. So that means that the Musketeer is just sitting comfortably in the back. And now he's going to go for Purge on my Flagellant. I do no longer have those Redeems, so this isn't the greatest situation for me. And he can reach my Musketeer now with that Abomination. So I'm most likely just uh, either going to go for a heal on myself with the Musketeer, or I'm going to move forward with the Flagellant. And since I would drop to the store, I would heal the Musketeer. So... Um, I do decide to heal myself with uh, with the Musketeer. He goes for Manacles, but there's no way in hell he does 12. Not even with a crit he would he do 12, I'd say. Not with those trinkets at the least. So right now, we might be seeing the first time that this Abomination in 11 rounds isn't going to be using Beast Pile. He's going to go transform. He's finally going to use the Horror from Wretched's Cloak. And he's going to do a big rake. Wow, that's, that is a big rake. He's showing that Abomination that was planning to go rake all match, how it's actually done. You see, this is how we do it. This is how we go rake. So that, uh, that A-bomb just gets dropped to the store. The Leper takes a bunch of damage. The Flagellant is going to move to position 1. Unfortunately, going for a guard right here isn't going to do anything because he has both Hue and... Um, Actually, he doesn't have transformation anymore, so he can't just uh, go transform Rake or transform Slam. But he does still have Hue on that uh, on that sniper, so I could just suffer a quick death blow into Flash. But I, wow, he just gets a manacle skill for 20%. So you see, I slipped up like once, and immediately it, it resulted in a death blow. Had that happened a few rounds ago, we could be looking at a totally different match. But now we get to just de-transform, and I'm gonna keep spamming that beast smile. It's getting that abomination closer to an affliction, and also closer to getting this stored. So now that the flagellant is gone, this uh, this is quite difficult because we no longer have like that that damage dealer in the form of the punish and the rain of sorrows, as well as that exsanguinate pressure. But uh, I I have a feeling that we've just been able to do so much. That uh, it might just be, it might just be enough. We drop a retribution, and look at this. My opponent's characters—they just don't die. They just refuse to die. And I do get that I don't have any finishing moves, but holy, holy Mary, mother of Joseph—they just refuse to die. He resisted three death blows. The leper resisted one. The men arms resisted five. Just totally insane. Maybe you should note what I do, says the Abomination, as he goes manacles into a post and uh, and pretty much impales himself on that man on that uh, Abomination pile. Oh, I wouldn't say impales himself, maybe um, uh, engulfs himself in nasty, dirty, dirty pile. And look at this, my opponent decides to go for a hue, gets a crit on that hue. One repost brings him to the store and the other repost kills him. So quite a fitting end for my opponent there, you know, GG Mr. Revolver Opossum, that was a really good ending to a really good match, just to go, instead of like, just stalling with that Solemnity, like, he already knew the match was over, so why stall with the Solemnity and not go for a crazy cool play with that Hue at the end? So one Hue, a crit, eats a crit in her past, eats another crit in her past, and that's how the cookie crumbles, and that's how my opponent's team was taken down, this leper with the double DOT stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this match, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.